Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Stu from Risky Riders. This is my super jet, and today we're rebuilding the engine. We're riding surf, and my engine shut off while I was under power, and when that happens, you know it's not a good thing. Did a little diagnosis on the beach and said, okay, I'm not riding it. And it turns out I was completely right. The crankshaft bearings exploded. New crank, cylinder, reboard, pistons, and seals and gaskets for everything. Luckily the cases were okay. I just got to clean them up and everything's going to be fine there. I give a shout out to High Speed Industries. They got me all these parts super quick. The crankshaft, the pistons, all the seals and gaskets, everything I needed to fix this thing. We're going to open it up and see what's inside. No gummy bears. They have the crankcase split apart. Everything's cleaned up. And what we need to do now is just make sure all the little holes are blown out, maybe with compressed air. And then we're going to put the silicone gasket maker, 3 Bond 1211. We're going to smear that on nice and even. Get a little bit in these grooves where the seal's going to ride. You don't want to get it on the bearing surface, so this groove in here and this land is for seal, but this one over here with the dowel pin, that's where the bearing is. You just want it where the seal is going to be. Just make sure that seals up real good. Same with the front and on, on both sides of the case. Clean up your edges just with a Q-tip. The next step is to get the crank out. You want to make sure you have a nice clean work area. So I usually lay out a couple of fresh paper towels so I can set the crank on it while I'm putting the seals on. The next step is to install the seals. I'm going to put just a little dab of oil on the shaft just to make sure that the seal slides on easily, easily and has lubrication. Now let's drop it in the case. You want to be careful, make sure you get the seal setting in the grooves. Once those are lined up, you can see it's kind of rocking. That's because there's pins. So you basically rotate the bearings until it drops in. Push that on. There we go. Once they're in, they shouldn't be able to rotate at all. The next step is to join the, ca the cases. So this is your last chance to make sure that the sealant looks good and it didn't get smeared or something while you're dropping in the crankshaft. The other thing you should pay attention to is make sure you have the dowel pins in both cases. <laughs> Do not install your cases without the dowel pins. This is the Loctite 572, which is the thread sealant. We're gonna make sure we get the good coating on every single bolt and just start them by hand. Now I'm gonna run them all down evenly. I wanna make sure that there's no gap all the way around before I torque anything. So now I got all the bolts lightly sunk down. What you want to do is just check the gap. And we have good squeeze out all the way around the parting line. It's not too much. Enough we can wipe off. It's definitely sitting flat. So the next step is to torque it. What's really nice about the OEM casting is it tells you the order in which to torque that each bolt. You want to start with one and end at eight and count up. 
It also tells you the, time, the final torque spec. If you look in the manual, it'll actually tell you to torque it to 15 newton meters and then a second time at 28 newton meters. Now you're gonna wipe off the excess once it's all torqued down. Now we got the crankshaft in there, the cases are sealed up together and all torqued down. It's a, always a good idea at this point just to make sure that your crankshaft does in fact spin freely. Yeah, nice and smooth. So the next step for us is to put on the bed plates, which are also going to require us to torque them down. This is what happens when you've been running your ski in the surf for 10 years. Mmm, corrosion. Right now I'm just cleaning up the bed plates, getting all the corrosion off the bolts, making sure the threads are clean. Per the service manual, we're gonna use Loctite 271, and you wanna make sure you put the bolts in the right spot because they're all different lengths, so pay attention. All right, now it's time to torque the bed plates. These don't actually have a pattern like they did on the crankcase bolts, so I just start in the middle and work my way out. First, you're gonna to torque them to 23 Newton meters, and then the second round, you're gonna to torque them to 47. Uh, sir, jet ski master. So now we got the bottom half all done. We're ready to flip the motor over and start putting the cylinder on. Because All right, we got the top end laid out and now everything just needs a nice thin coat of oil and ready for assembly. So the other thing you want to make sure you lube is the ports that go to your crankshaft bearings. They're these little holes in the crankcase and you just fill them up. So it's important to note that when you install your piston rings, there's two pins, one in each groove, and the rings need to go around the pin right there. And you'll see the rings actually have a little radius to match the pin. So the pistons have markings on the top of them. You'll see an arrow, that points to the exhaust. F goes to the front of the engine. And then there's also, in this case, a little number on mine, which determines the bore oversize from stock. Here I have arranged how it's gonna look inside. You have your wrist pin, your wrist pin bearings, and you have a clip on each side. The pistons, you'll notice, are oriented in the way that they're gonna be in the ski. To install the wrist pins, you're gonna to wanna to install the clips on the sides closest to each other. So one here and one here. That way you have the best access from the outside to slide your wrist pin in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got both the clips on the inside ones and I'm going to go ahead and start with the back piston and put it on first. So you want to slide your bearing into your connecting rod, then take your piston and slide it over top. Make sure you get 
the F pointing towards the front and the arrow pointing towards your exhaust. Take the wrist pin and slide it in. There we go. Now all that's left to do is install the other clip. Now do the same thing on the other piston. Make sure the F towards goes towards the front of the engine. We got the pistons installed now. Now we're ready for the cylinder. One thing you want to make sure is that the piston rings stay in the groove lined up with the pins. If that comes out of place, you won't get your cylinder on. And it's kind of tricky because you got to do two at once. So be patient, and be careful. I'm going to go ahead and oil up the cylinders. I'm just going to I'm just going to get oily here. Don't forget your gasket. All right, now it's time for this bad boy. Try to get your pistons kind of lined up. And now watch the rings. As you lower it down, you have to squeeze the rings to get them started. Make sure they're lined up with that pin. Okay, we got that one started. I'm going to move to the other one. That, that never gets easier. <laughs> All right, we got the hard part out of the way. Now it's time to put the cylinder head on. But before I do that, I'm gonna put a new zinc in, which is a sacrificial anode to help prevent corrosion inside the engine. To top the engine off, I'm going to put on my cylinder head. I'm running an ADA head and I need to put new O-rings in both the water jacket and the domes. So if you use a little bit of grease to hold the O-ring in, it'll help you during install and it won't fall out. Just wipe a little bit of grease in the groove.
All right, we got our cylinder head ready. Let's go ahead and carefully put it on the engine. Engine head. 572, that's sealant. Now we have everything in place, it's time to torque these. Now this is an ADA head, so we're going to go by the ADA specs and not from the OEM manual. Now we're going to install the starter. We're going to put three bond on the nose of the starter and just slide it in place. Okay. Alright, next we're going to install the bolts and the ground cable. The ground cable goes on the top mounting bolt and that mounting bolt is longer to accept the ground cable. When you're tightening the bolt, it's important to make sure that the ground cable is flat against the face and then against the anti-rotation tab. Now we're going to install the factory V-pipe exhaust manifold. If you've ever seen one of these before, you know that the top two bolts in the middle are very hard to get to. And they're actually a shorter bolt, so we're going to go ahead and install those first and actually slide it up into place. I'll show you how to do that. First you're going to grab the two shortest bolts. You can see they're quite a bit shorter. Get some uh, Loctite on those. Grab your gasket and just screw these into place loosely. Take your exhaust manifold and bring it underneath the bolts and slide it up into place. You might need a small screwdriver to just keep the washers pushed back. Go ahead and grab another bolt and just put it in place so it doesn't fall down. Next, install all the other bolts but leave them loose. The next step is to tighten those two middle bolts that are really hard to get to. You might need a custom ground wrench, something like this, or a really thin one that has a funny angle like this. Once you have the top center two tight, go ahead and tighten down the rest of them. Next step is to install the head pipe. I'm gonna leave it off for now, but here's how it looks when you install it. First the gasket, then the pipe, and you have three bolts. Why are you gonna leave it off? I'm gonna leave it off so it's easier to install the engine without this thing in the way. On the front of the engine, we have several things that happen underneath the front cover. And that's your starter Bendix, your stator, and your flywheel. These are all really important things to get right because it's part of what keeps your ski running, charges your battery, and starts your engine. Let's do that next. The first step is to install the stator. 
and there's a little timing mark that we're gonna have to pay attention to when we install this. There's a timing mark right here on the stator and the mounting holes are slotted so you can adjust the rotation of the stator. And the crankcase has a little mark right here. So we're gonna line up these two marks and that'll be the factory ignition timing setting. You also wanna use a sealant on the plug for the stator just so you don't get any water intrusion in behind your flywheel cover. When you install the stator, you want to leave the screws loose. That way you can adjust the timing and get the timing marks right. Once you have the timing marks lined up, go ahead and tighten them down. After you get the stator tight, double check and make sure your marks are still lined up. Now the next step is the Bendix. The Bendix has several parts that go with it. A big washer on the back, the Bendix, a small washer, a spring, and another small washer. The Bendix in operation should rotate freely in one direction and when you rotate the other direction, it should slide out. And when you release it, it should slide back. Take a little grease and put it on the back of the Bendix and slide the washer on. Go ahead and just smear this grease around a little bit. You can put a little grease on this gear too. Slide the Bendix into this brass bushing here in the bottom half of the case. You also notice that this gear on the Bendix will engage with the gear on the starter. Just like that. It's not a bad idea to just grease up any of these gears. They're going to be mechanically engaging with each other. So I like to have a little grease on there. The next thing we're going to do is install the flywheel. The things you'll need with the flywheel are the woodruff key, the flywheel bolt, and the flywheel. We also use a cold fusion flywheel lock tool when we're torquing the flywheel bolt. Make sure the mating surfaces on the flywheel and the crankshaft are nice and clean. And then go ahead and install your woodruff key just like that. Next, carefully install the flywheel and line up the woodruff key and make sure that it stays in place. You don't want to push the woodruff key out the back. It needs to line up. The OEM manual calls for a little bit of oil on the bolt. Go ahead and just thread that in. You can leave it loose for now. So next we use this handy dandy flywheel lock tool made by Cold Fusion. You wanna make sure that you have the dowel pin installed and use two of your flywheel cover bolts to hold it in place. You wanna engage the teeth on the tool all the way into the ring gear on the flywheel. Then go ahead and tighten it in place. That's gonna keep our flywheel from rotating. Next, get your torque wrench out and set it to 70 Newton meters. Go ahead and torque the flywheel bolt now. You might need someone to help you hold this. Nice, thanks for a hand. <laughs> With the flywheel lock in place, it's a good time to put on your engine coupler. You wanna use some anti-seize on here and just thread it on nice and snug. Now that the flywheel's torqued, we're ready to take off the cold fusion tool. The last step is to install your flywheel cover. Now you're gonna wanna put a little bit of grease on the small washer for the Bendix and drop it in this hole. A little bit of grease on the spring and do the same thing. And finally, the last washer. And I go ahead and put a little bit of grease just to hold it in place. Prep all your bolts with Loctite or thread sealant. 
Set the gasket on the dowel pins. Make sure you have these dowel pins installed. Take your flywheel cover and install it. Go ahead and just put one of the bolts in, just to hold it. I like to put another one in right on the other side and just make sure it sits nice and flat up against the engine. That's it for this engine. Next step is to put it in the hole and go test it out. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please subscribe. It helps us out a ton and we'll make so many more videos. How many engines could an engine chuck engines if an engine could chuck engines? I can tell you, I can chuck a good engine. <laughs> Man, I hope this works.